Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video tells you all you need to know about the major energies of the eclipse of the 5th of May 2023 so as to handle its energies for the best and the highest in your life. This is a supercharged fraught eclipsed full moon. Now in this video and the accompanying blog post I actually identify eight factors and I think it has to be said that it might pay us ill if we don't read and consider all eight. So the eight factors which I feel you need to know about relating to the eclipse of the 5th of May are as follows. Firstly, the moon is in Vishakhanak Shatra in the Vedic sign of Libra. But opposite it are five planets, including the sun, in the Vedic sign of Aries. Thirdly, Pluto is square, the nodal axis of this eclipse. Big meaning. Fourthly, Chiron is square Mars. That will affect the way we experience, handle and express our Mars. Fifthly, Saturn needs to be understood. It's casting a powerful aspect on all five planets in Aries. Sixthly, Mercury is retrograde. That needs to be brought into the equation. Seventh, Lilith is square the nodal axis. That is definitely very important to know and understand. Eighth, there's Guru Chandala Yoga. It's the Jupiter Rahu North Node conjunction. That needs to be understood. And ninthly, of course, as with every uh, lunation, every eclipse, the house the eclipse falls in the life area, in other words, the eclipse falls in, needs to be identified and understood. So let's look at and solve the nine factors. OK, factor number one, moon is in Vishaka Nakshatra in Vedic Libra. The nakshatras are the supremely wonderful, powerfully accurate 27 sign lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology that describe our, our, our personality and our life issues so powerfully well. Now this moon is at 20 Vedic Libra in Vishaka Nakshatra and this sums it up. The symbol of Vishaka is the triumphant arch and the best nature of Vishaka, the fullest potential, is spiritual. The power animal of Vishaka is the male tiger. Vishaka is ruled by Jupiter, so at its best this eclipse offers you Dharma now. But you need to know Vishaka's nature is vehement. Negatively, obsessions could burn each one of us up now. We could turn a bit insatiable or ruthless. It's so important to simplify the number of things you take on at this time. It's so important each of us takes on board the new lessons that this time offers. It's so important that each of us is open to the new spiritual realizations, which are the best facet of Vishaka. And at this time, we each need to be clear, what inspires me? And you must include that, otherwise you'll lose yourself in the overrunning energy of this time and not realise the great purpose that's available. It's so necessary at the time of this eclipse to keep very aware. And with Moon and Ketu in Libra, you might very well need to be on the lookout for what could be called devitalization, 
loss of oomph, loss of strength, loss of purpose. Deal with and manage this or you will lose out on the potential vast merits and gains of this eclipse. And with Moon and Ketu, the south node in Libra, be also so aware and careful of your relationship issues and caring. This eclipse and the weeks either side are a horribly tense, driven time. Don't let that damage your relationship. In fact, the whole karmic purpose of the K2 South Node transit through Libra is to become more aware of our past life influences that decided on our life path this time. And the factors in our destiny for this life that create our relationship issues, that affect our relationship. And indeed, it's the energy of this K2 transit through Libra that prompted me to create my new love star dating website. Um, it's an international dating site for those on a spiritual pathway. It's free to join. And uniquely, Love Star Dating is supported by astrologers and healers. Should you feel their services will help you in the making the best outcome of your present relationship or finding the new relationship that you are looking for. Okay, the second factor in this eclipse. Let's go to the other side of the eclipse axis. Sun in Aries. In fact, there are five planets in Vedic Aries. So opposite the moon in Libra is a super strong, revolutionary, change driven, expansion driven, damagingly driven, over expansionary breakthrough energy. A five planet pile up in Aries. Sun, Uranus, Jupiter, Rahu North Node and Mercury. Now the sun is so strong in Aries. I, you know, I so value the change in energy that I felt when the sun entered Aries. The super strong warrior energy has swept into our makeup and our energies. But there's such complications around that because of the other planets and the eclipse nature and so forth. So you have to be aware and avoid turmoil and overrunning. We each of us have to stop and breathe. Choose realistic focus at this time. Trim your sails. And incidentally, the sun is conjunct the star Menkar at the time of this eclipse. And Menkar is a two-edged energy that tips us through unconscious forces into loss and failure or success. It's a very weird star energy. And the sun is there at the time of this eclipse. Uh, I detail the degree in Aries of all five planets in the blog. Now, if you have major planets in your birth chart in Aries and or Libra, then the effect of this eclipse on you will be vast. For Aries and Libra people especially, this is true, but indeed it's true for all of us. So, in addition to being open to the gains and the openings and the opportunities and the spiritual growth and the positive achievement energies, also be careful, be aware, manage the huge currents wisely and sensibly. Be aware 
that there will be the unexpected. Be prepared to be spontaneous. Use your intuition. Use intuitive methods, vision work, pendulum dowsing, whatever it is. Break free from negative things that are still affecting you from your past. And incidentally, be aware that Sun and Uranus are freedom loving, but they may ride roughshod over others and over yourself and your self rhythms. And Sun and Uranus are in Barani Nakshatra, so this energy may manifest sexually at this time. So at the time of this eclipse with five planets in Aries, embrace with awareness the shifts you will feel and be successful. Okay, let's go on to look at factor three. Pluto is square the nodal axis. This is major. It's a time to come into your proper power, to purge, to consolidate, maybe to have death and rebirth experiences and help and healing in those. So at this time, Pluto square the nodal axis at the time of the eclipse. Embrace and manage the power changes in your life. Embrace and manage the shifts that will come into your life. And be aware that Pluto is retrograde from the 1st of May to the 10th of October. So he will carve his death and rebirth energy demand and gift deeper. Okay, factor four. Chiron is square Mars at the time of this eclipse. It's a very important twist to the tale. So we may feel at the time that we're dealing with all these fraught energies wounded. We may feel hampered in dealing with our needed success opportunities. We could feel so frustrated and disappointed in ourselves. So if necessary, for example, you can do vision work on this important facet of the energies. <clears throat> Envision the warrior you. Connect to that. Perhaps have an image or a statue and see it daily. Perhaps do a power animal retrieval type shamanic journey. Wonderful. So maintain awareness that Chiron is square Mars and your action might get drained or scattered or nullified. Be decisive to deal if you see this is happening. You need to strongly prioritise in the midst of an energy storm. The energy storm of this eclipse involving five planets in Aries, Moon conjunct K2 in Libra. And know that Mars transiting into Vedic Cancer, which comes in immediately afterwards from May the 10th, can cause lots of frustration Inertia and scatter. Mars does not do well in Vedic Cancer. And be very aware that Mars' is opposition Pluto exact on May the 20th, and of course for many days either side. Anger, revolution, or proper power. Five. Factor five. Saturn. Another major factor is that Saturn casts a strong third house aspect on all five of the planets in Aries. This energy is very, very different from the fraught energies I've been describing so far. Indeed, Saturn trashes the strength of some of the fiery airy 
this plan is just making them more frustrated and inept. But do note that Saturn has a divine purpose. Saturn makes us tie up loose ends. And if we don't get Saturn's divine energy and purpose right, we feel the greatest endless frustration. <clears throat> Saturn, in fact, defines our focus on what we can do to an important extent and tells you, you must work hard to tie up the loose ends, to consolidate, to do the necessary foundation work. So with all this going on, you could fall victim to overload if you are not aware, if you do not selectively prioritise, if you are not sufficiently in charge and decisive. Saturn is not your enemy. Saturn is your friend, if only you can see how. Do not underestimate how strong the energy of Saturn in Aquarius is now. Indeed, I've been feeling it strongly for months. Factor six, Mercury is retrograde and combust until the 10th of May and conjunct Uranus. Okay, this combination could give us revolutionary breakthroughs and changes. Be open, accept them, implement them. And indeed, stuff could possibly come in from our past in this life with the Mercury retrograde. And of course, with the Mercury retrograde, there could be havoc with our communications and IT. Okay, item seven is super important to know about. Lilith is square the nodal axis at the time of this eclipse and for weeks and weeks either side. This is not to be underestimated. Lilith is our shadow material in our unconscious. Lilith is our buried wild side as well. And we each of us need to get to know and work with our disallowed wild side. Raise it from the shadow and the unconscious, befriend it and ethically express it. Otherwise, we're not the fullness of you, the fullness of me. This is really important. So note what may be surfacing in your consciousness, in your awareness, in your emotions at the time of this eclipse. And some of it could have been very long repressed. So embrace it, work with it, get necessary healing and integrate it. Be very open to seeing how stuff in our shadow, our unconscious, may actually be de dictating what you do in your life, perhaps even since infancy. It may actually have been dictating who you think you are. Certainly that's happened to me. Our shadow material may need to be recognised and expressed, especially at this time that Lilith is square the nodal axis and there's an eclipse. It's so necessary if you are to manifest the fullness of your destiny at this stage of this lifetime's destiny pathway. Okay, factor eight, Guru Chandala Yoga. When Jupiter and, Rath, and Rahu North Node are in the same sign, Aries in the case of now, this is called Guru Chandala Yoga in Vedic Astrology. It's with us from the 23rd of April to the 30th of October. And the Jupiter-Rahu conjunction that is Guru Chandala Yoga is exact on the 27th of this month, on the 27th of May. Let's look at the two that combine. Jupiter 
expansion, wisdom, sense of purpose, spirituality, growth and knowledge. Expansion. Raho. Expansion. Illusion, obsession, addiction and dark purpose. But if we purify this combination, if we can bring awareness and succeed, we will find and express our incarnational life purpose for this life, our destiny for this life, and arrive all the better at embodying it at this stage in our life now. Rahu and Jupiter amplify each other, and that can have such negative consequences of overambition, overrunning, even darkness. So each of us has to develop awareness, develop spiritual awareness. If we are to reap the needed potential of our positive destiny, why we took birth in this life. And remember, Uranus is there as well. Uranus, Rahu, Jupiter will call you to define your freedom, to express it, to manifest it. I'm saying that briefly, but it could turn our life around. We so need to be aware of the call at the time of this eclipse to define our individual freedom path. And lastly, point nine, well, I make the point as ever that the house in your birth chart defines the life area in which the energies of this eclipse will manifest. Which house in your birth chart is Libra? Which house in your birth chart is Aries? And actually,